Hello everyone, Remy here with Classic Chroma 1. Um, for today's video, it will be a tour of this 2017 Buick Enclave. So, we'll go ahead and start it up. Um, here's the key fob, just the regular GM key fob. Uh, this is actually the first 2017 vehicle I've ever videoed, so that's cool. Here's the key, just a standard GM key, like I mentioned. It does have remote start. I'm gonna go and demonstrate that. You lock it twice. That was a loud horn. Then it starts right up. Then to turn it off, just hold that down. And if I were to leave it on, you would just go into the vehicle and just turn it halfway. You don't turn it all the way, the key. So go ahead and go inside the vehicle. We'll actually go ahead and take a look at our window sticker. If it will focus, 2017 Buick Enclave, 3.6 liter V6. Uh, this one does cost $48,550, which is a reasonable price for this one, in my opinion. Um, this one is from Schofield Buick GMC in Wichita, Kansas. I'll put their information in the description below if I remember. Um, but the standard vehicle price is $47,625, but the total vehicle price with a few options is $48,550, like I just said. So go ahead and move inside the vehicle. I don't know a whole lot about these vehicles, so I'll do my best. The first Enclave I've ever videoed. I've been in one before. Coming inside... This one is not smart, smart key access, so you just put the key in the ignition and twist the start. Ooh, that air conditioning feels good. Um, this one does have automatic windows on up and down on the driver's side, but automatic down on the passenger side. And the rest of them are not automatic. So go ahead and roll that down and get on with the tour. And we'll go ahead and pop the hood. Looking under the hood, this is a 3.6 liter direct injected V6. I'll put all the correct specs in the annotations. Go ahead and do a walk around. This is a very pretty vehicle. The Enclave has never been my favorite, but it is very pretty. GM's newer SUVs are really nice nowadays. Well, lately they have been. They've always been pretty nice. I do love the daytime running lights. That does look cool. This is a very pretty car. I would just rather have it I would like to have it in red. Coming inside, looking at your door panel. It is a good looking door panel. We do have some nice soft touch stitch padded materials up here. Some wood. Um, I believe it's real wood, but I'm not sure. Padded armrest, padded right here. And a uh, handle right there. But hard touch materials down, the, down below, but it is nicely grained. Over here you do have your headlight controls and your dimmer. Looking at your seat, you do have um, your power adjusted seat. Very comfortable seats. Um, it is a brand new 2017 and the seats are very comfortable. Um, this does have the tan interior. I'm not sure what this interior is called though. This has the Bose audio system. Two person memory right there and a chrome door handle. Looking at your dashboard, it is nice and stitched and padded. Um, you do have a little compartment under there for storage. It is very nice materials in here. Coming over here, you have your blinker. You do have the tap for three blinks. This one only has 60 miles on it. Um, before it had a lot less, but it is almost 60 miles coming from Wichita. And your wiper controls right there. 
and right here you do have your shifter i'm not sure what transmission it is but i will figure out and put it in the annotations um, looking at your unit right there going to home it is the uh, touch sensitive buttons right here which are quite annoying the acadia have had that there's fm am and i believe there is xm going to home you have all your uh sets right here this is a lot like the acadia worked if you guys remember the Acadia video that I did, you do have an auxiliary cord too. I'm going to go back to FM. And you do have all your information right there um, that should show up right here. Uh, maybe. These touch sensitive buttons are quite annoying. I really do not like these buttons. I'm controlling it right here. See, I'm pressing it over and over right now, and it just does not want to... There we go. It does not have a digital speedometer. I didn't... <laughs> digital speedometer, I did not notice. And here's your cruise control and your heating st heated steering wheel. This is similar to our 2013 uh, Yukon Denali uh, steering wheel, and your radio control's there, and your volume right there. I'm not a huge fan of this wood, it's like kind of a purple color, which I'm not a huge fan of, but oh well. And here is your uh, cooling and heated seats. I'm also figuring this out as I go. I really, I've never done a video, I've never even messed with this car before, this type of car before. This does have some cup holders there, and a USB and a 12 volt power outlet. Here's some controls right there. I'll kind of go through and you guys can pause and see all the controls. And there's your glove box. It is um, a lot larger than our 2016 Yukon XL Denali, um, which I am a fan of. This is the dual glove box. It's not as big as our 2016 Yukon XL Denali, but that's okay. It is dual tier, er, maybe. And it does slide back and forth. You do have some storage under here, just like the Acadia. It's a really similar design right here as the GMC Acadia. I'm gonna put that back how it was. But yeah, a very nice vehicle. It does look nice. We're going to move on to the rear seat. I would like to see some metallic in this paint, though. It is just plain white. Um, there are floor mats that cover all this uh, track right here. Um, to slide that forward, if you guys remember on the Acadia, you just pull that and push forward, but it would probably take two hands. Also, you can fold the seat like that, and you can tumble it, I believe. I think. Uh, well, um, I'll figure it out. Just put it back up like that, and it does slide back and forth, as I just mentioned. Your materials do carry through. It does have a cup holder right there. I do have to say, these seats are not near as comfortable as our 2016 Yukon uh, Denali. Here's your vents right there. They're all closed, so that's strange. This does have the same climate controls as the Acadia had. The interior of this is um, bigger than the Acadia, but it's very similar, I have to say. Sorry if the camera's a little bit shaky. But yeah, it's a nice size vehicle. Um, this would be perfect for a family road trip car. This really is a nice vehicle. Um, I've never really paid attention to these cars before, but they are nice. Coming back to your third row seat, um, I'm not expecting them to be near as good as our Yukon XL Denali, but they're okay. Um, they, are, they do have some leg room, but these are more of a place for smaller children. I'm not near as comfortable back here as I am in our 2016 Yukon XL Denali, but uh, it works. We do have some storage right there and some cup holders. Same over here, and hard touch materials back here. Um, our Yukon is the same way. Yeah, this vehicle isn't as big as our uh, Yukon XL. But it is nice. Um, yeah, like I said, these do fold forward and backward. Um, but the Yukon, our Yukon XL does not. Uh-oh. Coming back to the cargo area. 
Um, there should be a button back here that you push. I'm trying to find it. Oh. There's a handle, actually. I'm sure you guys knew that. Um, you do have a reasonable amount of space back here. Um, not as much as our Yukon XL. Um, but these seeds, uh, seats do fold. Oh, come on. Well, that seat's not far back enough. I'm sure this one's going to be the same way. Yeah, it doesn't fold all the way because those seats are uh, slid back. But they do fold down all the way and you got a nice amount of room. But they are not power folding and our 2016 Yukon XL Denali is. And to put it back down, you just push this button right there. You do have some rear parking sensors right there. And that'll be it for this 2017 Buick Enclave. So thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you next time.